Hi, good morning from Bali again. Um, I want to introduce you to Tutut. To Hello, I'm Tutut. <laughs> and Tutut, you um, often, those of you who have been purchasing some of our online textiles, Tutut's who you're in correspondence with. So I thought you should see this gorgeous face um, <laughs> instead of just the name that's attached to your emails. So thank you everybody who has been um, supporting us with our online sales group. I'm super grateful. Thank you so much. Um, today we thought Tatuta is actually our um, our field manager. So she oversees all of the trips that we would actually be going on already now mm -hmm. into the field. It should be. This is the, the 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 first month actually we have to go to the field. Where would we have gone at this time? Uh, we should. We it was expected to go to Sumba and Ende. Mm, in Flores. Yeah, in Flores. Mm. And also in yeah, in Sika. Mm. Mm. So that's um, being delayed, and hopefully this year mm -hmm. we will get out because our weavers are really hoping we can get to the field mm -hmm. this year. Besides um, all of that that Tata does, um, she also is in charge of our herbarium. And Threads of Life has probably the biggest, uh, the only natural dye herbarium in Asia. Um, we work with Kew Gardens in London, and they've taught us how to be able to help uh, to make specimen vultures. And they also keep a specimen vulture themselves mm -hmm. in, yeah. uh, in, Kew? in Kew Gardens. So everything we have, they mm -hmm. have a copy yes. of. Yes. So we feel very supported by mm -hmm. Kew Garden. Okay. Um, to Tut mentioned uh, Flores, mm -hmm. and I thought that's what we would talk about today is based on uh, this really beautiful Semba textile from Flores. Um, this is probably one of the most complex. complicated <laughs> process, especially the dyeing process. Yeah, and so many plants. Yes, yeah. it's about 17 plants that are yeah. used in yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And four steps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and these are s some of the plants, yeah? Mm -hmm. That use in the oiling or in the blue, also in the red dye. All these specimen from everywhere. And then we usually take three specimen. There's a one we save in, in YPBB herbarium and the one to Kew Garden, and one as a, like, what do you call it? Like an extra. An extra or archive. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's one specimen uh, damage or something we still have. Yeah. One extra. Yeah. yeah. I think what's been really good with this, because when we started in the field, everybody had, every local community had their own name yeah. for, for a, a plant. So mm -hmm. we had no idea what the recipes were mm. or what the plant was. So many of the people in the community now know the Latin name, yes? Yes, like especially for the like common plant, like uh, the mungkudu or kumbu in Indi, they call now moringa. So all of the weavers now using <laughs> the Latin name, so it would just make us easier when we communicate with them. Right. About plan. Yeah. Right. I remember that this one was really the most difficult mm -hmm. one to understand, and this is um, this is one of the keys to the red dye process. Yeah. Yeah, that's what um, uh, the weaver said. That this is the like they said the the, the key as to because they believe that this uh, the powder of the fallen leaf it can like uh, lock the color especially the, the red color. But it's, it's also used in, in indigo dye as well, not only in red dye. So the, um, this I think was in 2005 when we were trying to find, this is the alum, the mm -hmm. aluminum. Uh, accumulator? A hyper, a, aluminum hyper accumulator plant, mm -hmm. but it provides the alum which is needed as the mordant in the mm -hmm. red process. Yeah. So in the past, that uh, dye material, that plant mordant, was actually traded from areas that were mm -hmm. not necessarily near the weaver. Mm -hmm. And they would trade uh, whatever they might have cloth or 
uh, food mm -hmm. and they would trade with people who were growing this plant. Yeah. And uh, we got this identified as being Simplocus. Simplocus cochinchinensis is the primary, the primary one in this one. area. Yeah. And they use then, uh, for the plant, they use the... The fallen leaf, oh. which is the very sustainable. So we don't have to cut the trees or pick the leaf. So it's, the plant still grows, but we can use for dyeing, which is yeah. amazing. It is. That was yeah. like, I think that was one of the most exci exciting moments yeah. in Threads of Life, was when we realized what a great sustainable mm. product this is. Right. Right. And now, because you also are working with, um, along with Pong, mm. you are um, working with harvesters, also in Flores. Yeah. And th what do they do? The uh, with the red, with the with the simplocus, simplocus. Where that? Well, there are uh, two cooperatives now we work with in Flores. Um, they are in the mountains area where the simplocus. The Simplocus only grows in very few area, like in 800 meters above sea level. And we have um, about uh, 30 women who are involved in this uh, project. Mm -hmm. So they, when, when they go to the garden, they take the um, Simplocus leaf, the fallen leaf, then the gathering. So every year or every six months, we go there and then we buy this for them and then we do the powdering here and then we send again to the community mm. for you. And you, you've also been selling that to some of the yes. dyers in internationally, yes. yes? Yes, like maybe two years, like mm -hmm. late uh, this recently, like two years um, recent, we start selling it abroad mm -hmm. to um, Canada, Italy, France, US, Wow, that's great. Yeah, and also the mess here in Indonesia, there's many eco printer uh, mm. artists that they buy from us. Mm. Which is really good for the community and for us. Mm. And it can still support them. Yeah. yeah. So many people dependent on mm. so many parts of what goes into these textiles. So, yeah, next time when you look at some of these textiles online, uh, take it deeper and think about the plants and the people and the farmer and the land and that this is an incredibly intricate and complex mm -hmm. process that ends up making this, I get shivers, this really beautiful solid textile. Um, they always say that this is like birth where something comes together in a woman's body and creates another human. And it's the same thing that these plants and barks and dried leaves come together like the thread and the thread spinning out. Mm. And in that, the weaving coming out that it ends up creating a textile wow. this beautiful. So keep in touch. <laughs>